now the question is, why did Jesus change Simon's name to Peter in Matthew 18, 17? Well, he didn't. But we think Peter was a pun, or at least a nickname used by Jesus. Because in modern English, what Jesus said would go something like this. You're a rock, Simon, and on the foundation of that rock, I will build my congregation. He said to him, from now on, you're called Rocky. In Aramaic, it's Caiaphas. In Greek, which is the original language of the Gospels, it's Petros. In Latin, it's Petrus. In English, it becomes Peter. The first three mean rock, and the last two just preserved the sound without really knowing or thinking about what it actually meant. Truth is, the word Peter is used as rock in English, too. It's just archaic. It remains in words like saltpeter, which is a nitrate found in nature. However, here in Matthew, it seems to be indeed a pun, because that's not where Simon received the name Peter in the first place. You see, he already had that name. The first time he is mentioned as Peter is in Matthew 4.18, which is a much earlier verse than when Jesus called him that name. Matthew is the only gospel that says anything about building a community on a rock. But according to the earlier Gospel of Mark, Jesus gave Simon the surname of Peter. Doesn't say why. Okay, it's going to try to How many name. teachings have you heard on that one? Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just that there were two different Simons in the group, and Jesus needed a way to distinguish between them. Yeah, there was a lot of Judases and Jameses and everything else. Even if there wasn't a J in the language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all true even if it didn't happen and Jose yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the author of Mark had to use Peter because Paul had always referred to him as Peter or Cephas and never as Simon remember the oldest gospel the book of Mark has references from Paul's epistles making them older than even Mark and it's not all clear why the author of Mark needed to introduce the name Simon instead of just calling him Peter. Maybe it's just that Caiaphas was not a common name, and it was kind of a weird nickname, and he needed a regular name that was more respectable. Now a little more about that man. Peter was a Jewish fisherman and laborer, chosen by Jesus as one of the core 12 disciples, and the one who became one of Jesus' closest friends. He was a squirrely, doubting and sometimes contentious, but loyal friend and follower who nonetheless out of fear denied knowing Jesus at a crucial moment. But knowing the court system at that time that tortured witnesses to ensure truth telling kind of excuses him just a bit. However, we're told Peter continued to minister and convert Jews until he was martyred for it. Then centuries after he died, the early founders of the Catholic Church decided to say a poor, long-dead Jewish laborer and teacher was their first pope. Do you think a Jewish fisherman laborer who denied Jesus would have accepted that position? Much less would have the founding church have given him the job if it was still alive? I think the answer is no to both questions. It is claimed that God wrote a book called the Bible, and it is generally admitted that this book is somewhat difficult to understand. And as long as the church had all the copies of this book and the people were not allowed to read it, there was comparatively little heresy in the world. But when it was written and read, people began honestly to differ as to its meaning. A few were independent and brave enough to give the world their real thoughts. And for this, and in the name of the most merciful God, his children were exterminated with famine, sword, and fire. Can you imagine over the wild waves of battle rose and fell the banner of Jesus Christ? For 1600 years the robes of the church were red with innocent blood. They were very good at devising punishments severe enough to be inflicted upon other believers who honestly and sincerely differed from them on any point whatsoever. I suppose their thinking was, why should they show mercy to a kind and noble heretic that their God was going to burn in eternal fire anyway. So, let's finish on the church 
the rock is supposed to have been started upon. With remembrance of Jesus' words to Peter concerning violence, do you think the founding church remembered Peter cut off the ear of a man named Malchus and Jesus chastising for it? I know they didn't hear the lesson Jesus then provided because he told Peter at that point, all those who take up the sword will perish by the sword. What's yet to come, boys and girls? What's yet to come?